This is a Saddleback Church podcast. When we talk about reading the Bible, we usually talk about it in a personal, individual context or in a church setting. We talk about developing personal Bible reading habits. We talk about studying God's word or growing a healthy devotional life. But today, I want to talk about reading the Bible in a different way. I want to talk about reading it with non-believers. Now, perhaps this idea is new to you. Perhaps you may think I sound crazy, or maybe you felt your muscles automatically tighten at the mere notion of reading the Bible with non-believers. But I, I hope you stay with me. Saddleback Church right now is actually spearheading a new multi-church initiative called One Million More. It's asking the question, what if one million more fell in love with the Bible? Because friends, reading the Bible with people who don't know Jesus does not have to be as scary as it sounds. So for today's conversation on reading the Bible with non-believers, I've asked a Saddleback executive pastor, Jason Williams, to come back on the podcast. And you'll quickly hear why. Jason has a long history of hosting Bible book clubs with non-believers. So he's here today to help to break down the fear barriers that you may feel. He'll give some practical tips on how to read the Bible with non-believers And I'll talk about the powerful impact that reading with non-believers can have, not just on them, but on you as well. My name is Jason Wheland, and this is Doable Discipleship. Now, my conversation with Jason Williams. All right, Jason Williams, returning champion. Welcome back. <laughs> it's good to be back. Always good to be here. I mean, I think it's like your third or fourth time I on the podcast. I think it is. So. Yeah, something like that. I'm starting to feel like uh, a valued guest instead of someone that's to be avoided. So It's thank not you. the one that, oh, I guess it's been long <laughs> enough. It's it, it, No, the, for this topic in particular, you were the first person that I thought of. I'm honored. And so today what we're talking about is reading the Bible with non-believers. Now, this question came up as we were talking about episodes to do around the Bible. Yeah. And specifically, we are excited to talk about this One Million Bibles initiative that Saddleback is spearheading. Yeah. Um, and so this idea of reading the Bible with people who don't yet know the Lord yeah. came up. Yeah. And literally, I thought, well, I need to get Jason on the podcast to talk about it because I think you've done this more than anybody else. It, it's a topic near and dear to my heart for sure. It is. So let's talk about kind of your journey with this. Well, yeah. What has your experience, your journey through reading with nonbelievers been like? Like, where did that start as yeah. something that really caught your heart? You know, honestly, it started kind of accidentally. I'm, I, I, didn't intend to invite someone into our group when we were we decided hey we're going to read the bible together and honestly i think i bought a a myth that i think a lot of of christians believe and that's that the bible being such a an, an old and dated document that it doesn't speak to today's culture and that it needs a lot of explanation for someone that's not familiar with it uh, i think i probably believed that but then we did this uh, this challenge kind of my first experience with um, a book club type, uh, immerse type of experience. Yeah. And we invited our group and we just sort of opened it up to people in the church. And one, a lady came and she said, Oh, by the way, can my husband come? He doesn't, he doesn't know Jesus. Mm. And I was like, well, of course. Yeah. Let's it would love for him to come. But I'm thinking, you know, I wonder how, what this journey is going to be like for him. And I was mm. very intrigued to see how that would go. And I know we're probably going to talk about that, but yeah, that's well, where that yeah. began. Probably Gosh, that would have probably been 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, something like that. Okay. And and since then, and we can talk about that experience, but yeah, since I wanna, then yeah. I actually make it a point to try to include when we do something like that, I want somebody who hasn't crossed the line of faith yet in in the group yeah. for reasons that I'm sure we'll discuss. But that's that's the genesis of it was, was that experience. Yeah, and we've talked about the 
immersed Bibles on this podcast before. It's worth yeah. mentioning again because it's a product, you know, it's it's a Bible, but it's written and produced in such a way that is easy for for people who maybe haven't read the Bible to dive in. It takes yeah. out the chapters, it takes out the verses, and instead you're just reading it as... As it's written, as it's originally written, written, right? Like we've added all of the markings through the years to so that a group can find the the places yeah. easily that they want to to talk about, read. It makes study on some level um, just more convenient and, and easier to navigate. But I think when you're just going to read and read big and in chunks, removing all of that creates and returns the Bible to more of the grand narrative that I think it was intended to be. Yeah. and and so I I love. The the experience and when I think it's, it's, it's an especially effective format mm. for inviting non-believers in yeah so it, I don't want to get ahead less of scary. it so I can talk about that but you, you tell me when and I, well <laughs> well I, I I couldn't help because as we were talking about immerse I, I in, in talking about uh, about the removing of the chapters and the verses I couldn't help but think about how much harder it would be to memorize scripture yes and you know if you know you're talking to somebody yep you pull out a verse that you say and then they ask oh where is that and you say yep. about halfway through <laughs> first Corinthians <laughs> if you get to here you went too far if yes. you, you haven't come far enough so the 100%. verses help in that they, sense they 100 percent do I am not a anti-study Bible person I'm not but I think I, I think about the right tool for the right job or the right context. 100%. Right? Yeah. So if I'm going to engage non-believers, I just love the format without those things in it um, for, for a number of reasons that I, I know we'll probably get into. So I, at one point, I want to come back to, to how you've been intentional about inviting non-believers in everyone is setting. So, yeah. so remind me if I haven't got to that part yet. Got it. But I do want to go back to that first experience that you had. Yep. How did how did your your or your expectation then be met by reality? What was like? Did you walk in being like, okay, I got to be extra extra aware, extra concern, and then yep. and then you or, and then what actually happened or how did it how did yeah. it go? Well, <laughs> it, it, it went awesome. I thought that um, I would need to explain a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. I thought um, that that the guy's name I'll I'll use. Uh, well, Robert, sure. so I'm not going to use his last name, <laughs> but Robert, uh, who lives in another state, so I don't know that he'll hear this, Yeah. but um, Robert was, I thought I would need to maybe uh, almost apologize for different parts of scripture or whatnot, and what happened was Robert would show up, and the thing that enriched the discussion so much is that Robert was unafraid to ask questions that maybe everyone else around the table or around the living room were thinking mm. and, and had, but they thought, I don't know that I can ask that. I've been in church for a little <laughs> while, or I'm, maybe I should know this. Um, and do you remember what average. book you were reading at the time or what, which it was? We were reading through the New Testament. Okay. So the, it was the immersed Messiah of Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, but Robert, there was no question off limits to him, and, and which, <laughs> which made for an incredible discussion because instead of like, like hovering around some of the the typical spaces he's going back to ground zero and mm. asking and challenging the group on some level to uh, almost reorganize their thinking around theological constructs and things that we were experiencing in a way that was refreshing because i think you know we've been in bible studies and people you you sort of get into a rhythm and the way that those studies go and the way that you answer certain questions and there are key phrases that people know that sure. they can repeat and and having someone that hadn't crossed the line of faith yet was incredibly stimulating because we just went to places that we probably wouldn't have gone otherwise. And it was, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> I'm just picturing some of those. So, uh, we're all just cool with this virgin birth thing. <laughs> Like nobody's, nobody's, nobody's asking about that. Troubled by that? Yes. How come nobody is asking this question? Yeah. Wait, these two, because they, they sold a field and didn't give all the proceeds were struck down. I mean, like what, how do I process that? Like the things that we'll just gloss over yeah. or we take for granted. He didn't, he was experiencing it with fresh eyes for the first time. Mm. And that was what lent a, a, a beauty to that conversation that in, in that moment, literally my wife and I talked about it and we we're like, 
we love this format. Mm -hmm. We see us doing this with groups for, for the years to come, but our goal would be to never have the conversation without someone who is exploring faith for themselves Mm. in it because of, of the dynamic shift that it represented. How did, how did that time end with Robert? As you finished Messiah, you did eight weeks or 16 weeks, however long you did. And then what was, so honestly, we, it, it, it was great until we get to the last week in revelation. Oh, gotcha. And he shows up for that last (laughs) night and he says, guys, this has all been making such sense to me until now. I don't (laughs) get it. I don't understand. And, um, and I, and I loved that, right? Because how many people have read revelation and it's been a, a tough uh, thing to grapple with and, and they don't say anything because it's like, well, this is the inspired word of God. So I don't know that I can question it. And Robert questioned it. So we, we deep dove and this is where some, you know, other resources like the Bible project has two incredible 11 minute videos that, Mm -hmm. um, bring the, some structure and some understanding to revelation in ways that are profound in their simplicity. Mm. And so we were able to incorporate some of those things, had him watch them. We watched them as a group, talked about it. He still was like, yeah, I still don't know, (laughs) but this Jesus that I've met on these pages is really powerful and compelling. It's like, well, let's focus on that. Yeah. Let's spend a little bit more time there. And that's where we went. It's (laughs) like, Hey, you know what? There's, there's all of this that we've, we've gone through and discovered and, and we can, we can aim anchor a faith and a life in that Robert he, he so I don't want to sugarcoat it he didn't get all the way there hmm. and he and I 12 years later are still in conversation hmm. and we'll touch base and um, he's still on a journey but that yeah. certainly moved him from absolutely not agnostic uh, totally. to all right I I I I'm getting my mind wrapped around this. Mm. And so it was a, it was a great stimulus. He would say, uh, in his journey today. Mm. So, so then in being intentional about bringing in, um, non-believers to your other time, yeah. how do you, how do you and your wife really focus on being more intentional about that? What does that yeah. look like uh, as you guys are thinking about, okay, we're going to start a Bible book club again. Yep. Who are we going to reach out to? Like, let, how does those conversations go? Yeah, we, I mean, obviously we pray about who that might be, who God's brought into our life that that maybe would be someone that would be interested and open to that. And so we'll pray about that and ask God to surface a, a couple of names. And um, and so we'll do that. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of the way we'll do it. And then that's what I love about that format is that we'll refer to it in those invitations as... Hey, we've got this book club, mm-hmm. which which isn't that's true, right? We, yeah. we, we're it's we structure it exactly like a book club, and this time we're actually going to read through the New Testament or whatever section of, of scripture of the Bible we're you want to read at that yeah. time. And it, all, all we do is read, kind of like we would in any other book club, and come together and just say, "Hey, what stood out to you? Mm-hmm. And did this impact at all the way that you you view God?" And and so there's a disarming quality to that for people. That's what I think makes it such. A, a powerful evangelistic strategy, which which I don't know that people would think about. Yeah. Hey, getting together and reading the Bible, that's that's like sharing. Yeah, actually, it's 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 really compelling because mm. people, even if they're not a part, they've never been a part of a faith community, everyone in the community knows the concept of a book club. Either they've been in one, they've seen one in a TV show or a movie or something. So when you present that, there's something disarming about that that I think is actually sets up a more compelling relational dynamic and a chance to speak to matters of faith than mm. just sort of a, a cold uh, cold call, so to speak, or a, just, just artificially taking the conversation into that direction. I, I, can you walk us through those those conversations a little bit yep. more when you're first asking a person to yep. join the book club who, you know, yep. doesn't follow Jesus. Yep. Not, you know, are, are there common questions that yeah. come up? That's you know, question. is that a, Hey, are, do you expect me to pray? Yep. Hey, do I need to, you know, do the sign of the cross as yeah, I crossed yeah. into your doorway. Really like, good. what are the questions that? Kind yeah, of- that's good because there there are common ones. The, the, the first one usually is, "Hey, I'm I'm not like a church person. I'm, yeah. I'm not a, a person of faith." And so I'm like, hey, great. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's fine. I mean, but have you ever read through the Bible? Like, is there a curiosity about what it says? Because 
I think if, if nothing else, you'll just be able to be conversant in mm-hmm. uh, what the Bible actually does or doesn't say. Because a lot of times we have a perspective of books that we've gotten secondhand, but this is a chance just to go on the journey personally. Yeah. And, and there's no expectation that you do anything or, I mean, we're just, like I said, we're just sitting around talking. I'm not going to pass around the tithe bucket. No, exactly. The, yeah, 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 yeah. In the book club. This is a casual, there's no, there'll be no pressure on you to um, make any sort of a decision or embrace yeah. something that you're not comfortable with. Like I said, we're just going to, to talk about it and see, you know, what, what that does and how that might shape our perspective. So I think that's the, the, the primary one. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the other one is our, so how will this work? Like, what will that look like? And so it's great to be able to say, hey, we show up. Usually a couple of us are running late, so we'll just you know, <laughs> chat and catch up for a bit. And then when everybody gets there, um, we'll pray. And you don't, you, it's up to you whether you participate in that, but it'll be brief, just setting the time for the night. We'll talk. Here are the questions that we ask. There's, there's five basic questions. And, uh, and we'll, just, we'll just talk about that. And then we'll conclude the night. So that's, that's really all it is. It's, it's exact, exactly like a book club experience that you would expect. They don't often ask when the speaking in tongues comes into play. <laughs> they don't. In the gr- they're, in not, the gr- they're not thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And honestly, I've never gotten the question about a tithe bucket or anything like that because if you're outside the church, you, you're just... <laughs> Those are things that they're just, just not, not thinking, thinking about, about the way you're, that you do you're, when you're, you're really in the not. service. <laughs> the thing that they're concerned about is, am I going to feel like a, a an outsider, like someone who is armed or not armed with specialized knowledge that everybody else might have? Yeah. Uh, am I going to feel comfortable in this setting? Those are those are really the questions that that you get. Yeah, I'd imagine it's it's helpful too to be able to tell the person, hey, so so it's going to be me and my wife. Yep. It's going to be this other couple. Yep. If you don't know them, let me tell you about them. Yep. You know, give them just some. Yep. You know, to. Y- y- I take down the veil of yes. uh, of of unknown a right. little bit more. Yep, and it even helps more if they know other people and be like, you know, these guys exactly. Like, you know, they're you know. Well, and sometimes I'll just say, hey, and if there's anybody else you want to invite to come with you, yeah. bring them with you because sometimes there's safety and power in numbers, right? Totally. So like, if you have someone that you think would enjoy this experience that you want to bring along, please, by all means, we, we'd love to have them. And and that often brings down any of the anxiety that they're they're feeling. So. I would imagine uh, a, a common question that comes up on the Christian side, on the believer side, who might be a little nervous about bringing unbelievers into their small group setting or book club, yep. is the possibility of confrontation <laughs> uh, or of, of a night that doesn't go as well. Yeah. So, so ha- have you had those experiences and how, or, and how would you encourage people to navigate you know, maybe a little belligerence that might come up every now and then. Yeah, I mean, to expect it and and honestly to celebrate it because if there's, in those moments, it's usually intellectual integrity at play. Like Mm -hmm. this person is grappling with something and they might lean in because it doesn't make sense to them. But in leaning in, most of the times, I've never experienced anyone in that setting who is, trying to grind an ax and pull a group in an opposite direction. Mm. Most of the times their questions or their strong statements or whatever are a genuine intellectual pursuit. They're yeah. grappling. And, and so that's when I'm, I've always embraced it and I've always set the table and I'll celebrate that. I'm like, guys, we've asked some great questions tonight and we haven't all seen eye to eye. Um, and that's okay. And, and sometimes we keep something off to the side that we call a parking lot. Mm. And if it's if we come to a place in the discussion where uh, maybe we need a little bit more insight, a little bit more research uh, to investigate something that has been raised, a question, we put it in our parking lot and together commit to, hey, let's let's maybe do a couple of searches this week and let's see what we can find out about this question or about this issue. And then next week we'll start with it Mm -hmm. and say, all right, did we find anything that might shed some further light on this? Or has anybody thought, uh, had some new thinking about this, this subject? So take a moment that could be tense, celebrate it because it's, it's moments like that when, We struggle and grapple with something when we actually grow in our understanding. So Mm -hmm. take the tension, turn it into something that can be celebrated and as evidence of of growth and maybe forward progress in our understanding and and the journey. Yeah. Are there any other sort of practical, like about the reading tips that you would encourage people to think about if you are starting your own book club, or or maybe it's just that, maybe it's not a book club that you're doing. It, It might be that you are, are reading just with one other person, but, yeah. but are there other sort of, uh, of, of more practical tips about the, 
about the reading time. Yes, I, for sure. Yeah. Because I think the tendency, especially if the majority of the group, if it is a group, yeah. is uh, people of faith and you have someone that hasn't crossed that line yet, it's really easy to alienate that person by assuming things. Mm. And the, the rule of thumb I would say and encourage and the one that, that my wife and I have adopted is never assume anything. Yeah. Like you're in a, a, a conversation and someone says, you know, this reminds me about, you know, Hebrews 11 and the Hall of Faith and da da da, and they just keep going. Uh, this, this just calls back Abimelech, doesn't it, guys? Doesn't it, everybody? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then I will pause that and say, all right, you referenced something. Uh, can you tell us more? Like set the stage for that. Like, what is that? Or if it's in the book that we're reading, we'll go there and turn to that section and yeah. read it for context so that that person, because, because every moment that they feel on the outside looking in yeah. lowers their resolve to come back for the next one mm -hmm. or to keep going. And so we are constantly mindful of what have we assumed what did someone in the group or in the conversation, again, if it is a group, what it, what has been assumed that we need to clarify and that we need to um, add some some uh, some color to so that they don't feel like, oh, they, they just referenced something. I'm out of this conversation and I can't participate in this. So yeah. don't assume anything. Mm. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate the questions. The, the, the questions are not a threat. Mm -hmm. Questions are a gift to the group. And I think sometimes we put ourselves in position to have all the answers and we won't. I mean, that's the, the nature. If, if we did, we wouldn't need God. There wouldn't be anything. There wouldn't be a need for faith. Faith is going to be a part of the equation. And there are going to be things that come up that maybe we don't have a, a, an answer for in the moment. And that's okay. Yeah. Naming that not because I think that's a bigger turnoff too. If there are legitimate questions and hard to answer things that someone who hasn't crossed the line mm -hmm. of faith raises and we sort of whitewash them or brush them aside or give a flippant uh, answer. That's a, that's a deterrent and a turnoff to someone who's mm -hmm. on a, on that journey. So I think those are some things that come to mind practically in those conversations that I think help foster a, a place where that person can, can grow and explore in a safe way. Yeah. And, and I would say for, for you, it's helpful to set your own expectations. And maybe if you have a, a standard small group that you usually do things with, and you're doing this book club now, and you're inviting this uh, other person or couple into the group, yep. then it helps to set that expectation that, we're still you know, we're still going to be in the word yep and it just might be a little bit different than yeah. you are used to maybe right. we're not doing the amount of study elements or cross references maybe that you like to do yes and because you have people who aren't as biblically literate as mm -hmm. you but it doesn't mean that it's going to be shallower instead no. you're going to be looking at it from a different angle it's a very different experience it's, yeah. a, it's a great point because because what it encourages that format encourages is reading big yeah right so uh, the 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 thing I, and again i'm i'm a fan of study bibles mm -hmm. i use study bibles in my ministry i use study bibles i bounce back and forth in my quiet time the thing that it does, though, is it creates sort of like like stop signs. Mm. It's it's natural to think every time I end a chapter, oh, this is a good stopping point, and I'll stop. So so the reality for uh, most people in their quiet time on a on a on a regular basis is to read uh, a chapter or two or three and focus there. But what that does, what that that prevents, is when you read big and you read whole books at a time hmm. or whole sections at a time, you start to pick up on themes that you miss when you're you're starting and stopping so often, and you'll you'll get to the end and be like, wait, I, I think this this echoes something that was said at the beginning, and you'll flip back, and sure enough, you'll see that there was a very intentional effort by the author to begin in a place that he comes back to again at the end. And then you see the way that he strung that argument together in a way that's that I've seen, even people who've been reading the Bible for years and years and years, it is a new experience that brings other things to life. One, one other thing yeah, I want to say, sorry. They, they, so I think at the beginning of these, setting it up as a win-win. Mm -hmm. This is a gift for people who've been in uh, the Word for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. It's also a gift for this this person or this couple or these people that you're inviting in because I, I don't I've never seen someone belligerently opposed to getting into and at least understanding what the Bible says, but they're intimidated by it. Mm -hmm. 
And they feel like they don't have, because they're not, they've not been in church, because of what they've heard about the Bible, it's a daunting task to just open it up and start reading on your own. But in community, there's safety in exploring it yeah. in a way. So it's a, it really is a win-win. The person that, that um, hasn't come to faith in Jesus yet, they're not a threat to the conversation the rest of the group. And the rest of the people can be a great um, resource and, and um, gift to the person that's on that exploration as well. Yeah. I want to make sure to note... Um, We've been talking about immersed Bibles yep. and in the format it uses. So I, I, I want to make sure to note, I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay. If that's something that you who are listening would like to explore what those are, yep. then you can check those out. We use them at Saddleback yep. and we, we encourage anybody to check them out. As Jason's been talking about, they're great, especially in this arena yep. for having these book clubs where you're reading big picture yep. and getting kind of the, the grander story right. um, in front of you, which yep. is great. If you are just using your own Bible and reading alone with somebody else um, with their own Bible, that's great too. hundred percent. That there's, that there's it's not a right or wrong. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that God's word still in 2024 is alive. It's powerful. It doesn't return void. It yeah. changes hearts. It changes lives. It transforms and alters trajectories. And, you know, we, we, we think it needs a lot around it to have the power that it has. And, and it doesn't. It, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had I, I had a, a couple more questions that yeah, came up as, as you were talking. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the the relationship between the believers in the group yep. a little bit. Okay, um, and it, it seems to me that it would be helpful to ha kind of talk beforehand and just say, "Hey, here's what we want to do. This we're inviting this other couple. If you have other friends who aren't believers, you yes. want to invite too. But let's talk about it beforehand. How we want to hundred percent behave." And, yes. you know, and <laughs> absolutely. Kind of yeah, you do. And, and I think, and that's a, that's a great conversation because I think we've told our group before, Hey, we're, we believe, and we love having people who are on a journey. So we're going to go and invite some people. If you guys have them in your life, please, by all means. But we set their expectation for that. And, and then we also just explain kind of how, what that'll probably look like. And, and, and even, anticipate, help them anticipate some of the questions that will come and some of the things that will be called into question that maybe might make them uncomfortable because for whatever reason we're, we shy away from questions and we think that that's somehow a threat to our faith or, or yeah. the faith and just help people understand that that's not the case. And so I do think that that conversation is, is great. And to talk about the, the value in it, the value of it, the way that that can really facilitate. I think a lot of people want to be able to share their faith more than who do. And this really does, like I said, it's, it's, it gives people a conversation starter yeah. and it feels more natural to take things in the direction of uh, spiritual matters than it would if you're just um, uh, next to each other in a cubicle at work. And yeah. so I think it's just really powerful. And so having that conversation with the group and encouraging that, that mindset to inviting people hundred percent. Uh, going back a little bit to, to how you identify the unbelievers you wanted to choose, you know, at, invite yeah. into your group. Yep. What I didn't ask, and, and I, I, I realized I probably should have is, is there a specific, uh, type of person that you were looking for that you say, this is the right person at this time to invite into this? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, me, I'm like the, the off the charts extrovert. So there's, <laughs> there's, there's literally probably no one that I wouldn't invite. Yeah. But I think if you've, if you sense a little bit of, of openness mm -hmm. and God places them on your heart and you've, Maybe you've 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 lobbed little trial balloons of, of steering a conversation down a maybe more spiritual path or mm -hmm. something, and there's been an intrigue or whatnot. Those are things that I pay attention to for yeah. sure. Um, and and I don't. A lot of times I don't just cold call. You know, I'm not just walking <laughs> down the street. Hey, you want to join? But hey, 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 it's someone that I've developed a relationship with. Either yeah. uh, other parents of of uh, kids at school, my my kids' classmates. Uh, I coach youth sports teams. We've gotten to know people that way. Yeah. Um, neighbors that we meet. There's a little park across the street from us where everybody's dogs run. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if there's some sort of relational glue there, um, I just I just always believe in the sovereignty of God and, and, and guiding us into relationships. And so I'm like, all right, who has God brought into our life that we've established even a little bit of rapport with? That it would feel fairly natural to say, "Hey, we're doing this thing. Would you yeah. be Would you be interested in it?" I think that's more effective than mm. just the walking down the street. Hey, we're gonna. Hey, we're gonna. <laughs> now, if you have like a neighborhood uh, group and the neighborhood app or whatnot, and you put something out that way, that's different than yeah. than. Uh, and I think that that can work too because people mm. sometimes are connected digitally, and to throw that out. But we we are looking for just sort of relational inroads, a little bit of openness, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I think those are probably good filters to, mm. to think through. Have you ever engaged in Bible reading with somebody who is of a different faith? Yes, actually. Um, and, and this was somebody that I worked with, and his his, his last name was Islam. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and, and we would. We would trade uh, snippets of, I read pieces of the Quran, mm-hmm. he read um, passages that I selected for him from the Bible so yeah. that we could, we could talk uh, mm. about. And, and I think that actually is, is a good point, that if you're going to invite someone from a different faith, mm-hmm. there might be a, an offer on the other side of that to say, hey, I'd, look, I'd love to understand a little bit of the, yeah. of, of the, the book that you hold holy and, yeah. and, and dear um, as a way of, of breaking down barriers and to not feel like it's just straight evangelism, but a, a mutual curiosity. Let's get to know. Because if the Bible is what we say it is, yeah. that's a safe offer, right? Mm-hmm. Like you you, you have them into the Word of God, and you read the, the Quran or, you know, whatever. Pick your, your holy manuscript. Yeah. And, and that says something to the other person. That makes them feel uh, in that moment um, seen and their, their faith um, to some extent validated. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it breaks down some barriers. I'm going to ask you to pray for us in a minute, but yeah, before I, I do, I, I, I just wanted to, to offer this to people and Jason, feel free to chime in. Please yeah. do. Okay. But when you are praying or, or you, when you are reading the Bible with unbelievers, whether it's in a small group setting or whether it's in a book club, you know, or whether it's, it's, it's individually with another person, there's, there's multiple things at play. You are not just investing in the scripture and, and allowing it to pour into you and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through the living word of God in you and sowing nuggets into the uh, person who doesn't know Jesus yet. Mm-hmm. But there's a relational element that is happening too. Yes. And that is that is very important as well, that even if, even if like, like Robert, we, we, we were talking about, even if yeah. the person is still on the journey, yep. That's the, you, you still grew your relationship with them. You still I- invited them into your home 100%. to be influenced and to see Jesus in you, yes. through you, in your relationships, if there's other people there too. And so there's still this, it, it, there's multiple works of the spirit happening yes. at the same time. Yep. So it's not, it's not just about the reading of the Bible. It's about how you talk to each other, how you talk with them, how you interact, how you are hospitable, how you are, um, how you open in prayer. Even these, these little things are all a part of this bigger picture of what it means to live a missional winsome mindset. That's right. And you may not call yourself missional. You may say, Oh no, I'm not missional, (laughs) but that is what you're doing. Sure. And it's, and it's important to just be aware of like, okay, everything about how I hold myself Mm -hmm. is at play and is in points to God because all things point to point to God in one way or another. So it just, being aware that this is all happening, yes. I think is a helpful thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Robert still will reach out to me when he hits uh, life moments, yeah. uh, crossroads, whatnot. And honestly, I think the years since have been about him um, determining if I care about him. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, is it was this just, am I a project? Yeah. Or am I someone that this guy really loves and cares for, Mm -hmm. you know, in a way that is available, that is friendly, that is, is continuing to to go through life outside of of that book club. And I, I think that's a really important point. Like these people, the people you invite, 
you're inviting them because you love and care for them and believe that the word of God holds God's best for them yeah. and, and the, 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 the truth and the secret to build a life on. And if that turns into them being a project or a, a proselytizing uh, target <laughs> or whatnot, they smell that from a mile away. And so you invite them in with the expectation that God's going to move how he wants to move. And it takes the pressure off of you and it makes them feel welcomed. And like you see them as a child of God, potentially mm -hmm. made in his image, definitely yeah. um, that he loves dearly and would love to see come into a, a saving knowledge of him. And when that happens, it's just a, it's just a beautiful beginning to a journey. We, we plant whatever seeds we can and trust uh, the Holy Spirit to convict and guide and move and just love them to pieces throughout the journey. I, that's a really important point. Yeah. That's great. Um, make sure to check out the show notes to see, as I said, information on Immerse, information on One Million More, if you're yeah. interested in getting involved in that Bible reading initiative. Um, but right now, Jason, would you mind praying for for people who may be now feeling like, yes, I want to I, 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 I want to do this. I have people in mind or God, I want you to put people on my mind who don't know you yet that I want to read the Bible with. I would be honored. Let me do that. Father, we thank you for the way that you weave our lives into the lives of others. In some cases, those people know you and have a relationship with you and in others they don't and you intentionally bring us into their life to be someone that can encourage them that can invite them that can expose them to a truth that literally is life-altering and so god i just pray for everyone within the sound of my voice my guess is as we've been talking you've brought to mind someone or maybe multiple people that um, maybe they've thought about talking to or doing something with, God, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the opportunity to invite them into something as simple as, hey, let's let's start a book club and let's just read through the Bible and just ask the question, hey, what are, we, what are we learning? What do we see in this? What is it saying to us? God, I just pray that, that those good intentions, those, those images of those people would, would culminate with an invitation and that, God, you would move and that you would guide and that you would direct in ways that only you can. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. You didn't leave us groping around in the dark on our own to stumble our way through life. You gave us your word because you love us and you want it to help us to make the most of experiencing the abundant life that Jesus came to offer. God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for Jason and this podcast, for everyone who's listening, and I just pray your blessing over them today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed this episode, consider giving us a rating or a review on iTunes. If you do, you'll help other people find us in the future. You can also listen to these episodes on YouTube. Just subscribe to the Saddleback Church YouTube channel for these conversations, plus lots of other video content. And if you are already listening to us on YouTube, subscribe to the Doable Discipleship Podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app so you can listen in the car or wherever else you go. Don't forget to visit saddleback.com slash doable to check out all of our previous episodes and go to saddleback.com slash grow to find spiritual growth resources and view a calendar of upcoming events. Lastly, you can always get in touch with us by emailing maturity at saddleback.com. Send us your thoughts, send us your questions, your Bible questions, your life questions, whatever. Who knows? Your question might just inspire an upcoming episode. Thanks again for tuning in to Doable Discipleship. I'm Jason Whelan, and I hope you'll join us again next week.